Hey, it's Tom here from Our House Plants, and today we have a care video for the Ripsalis bacifera harid, otherwise known as the mouse tail cactus. So it's almost Halloween, the end of October. This plant was in one of my videos in one of the backgrounds and someone commented and saw it and they said, what's that? And yeah, it's the mouse tail cactus. Um, I thought these plants were quite common. I've seen them in a lot of nurseries and garden centres, but actually they don't seem to be that popular, um, which is a real shame. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've searched for it and you have want to know how to look after it, and I'm going to tell you about that. But yeah, it's a really interesting house plan. It's strange. It's quirky. You might want to see this. This is why it's called the mouse tail cactus, because it looks like a mouse tail or maybe a rat's tail, depending on how you want to look at it. But I'm going for the mouse. I'm going for mouse because it's less creepy. But yeah, this is a really, really interesting house plant. Um, Ripsalis, the most common ones are the mistletoe cactus, which sort of hangs down. It's very popular. That one is definitely something that most people will have seen. This one is related to that, but it is, it's just got its own quirks. It's, it's, yeah, if you like, it's quite heavy. I've got to be honest. It is quite a chunky plant. Oof, so I'm going to tipple it down in a minute. But yeah, this is really good. Um, you can see the berries on it. I'm going to zoom in and show you some footage. Okay, can you see it? Just zooming in, just so you can have a good look. Can you see it? Can you see it? Do you love it? Because I love it. I love this plant. It's great. It's so weird and strange and just odd. Oh, look, there's the berries. You can see them. Look at that. How weird. Don't eat them. They're not poisonous. Um, but don't eat them. You're gonna, it's not gonna be good for you. They look a little bit like gooseberries, don't they? I don't know, a bit weird. Don't eat them. Don't let your pets eat them. They're, like I said, they're not poisonous, but you don't want this plant to be munched on. Okay, I'm gonna put it down because it's getting too heavy. Um, right, so I know in some of my videos I waffle on a little bit, so I'm gonna try and be a bit more succinct and to the point. Um, so we're gonna talk about watering and lighting in one. So this is a jungle cacti, which means it's used to growing on trees and in the canopy. It gets um, not full sunshine and it doesn't get low light, which, which you would find on the, the forest floor. So it's used to kind of medium light levels and that's what you want to try and aim for with some sun if you can. Um, an east facing window, a west facing window are ideal. If you can provide that, brilliant. North facing, yes, that's okay, as long as it's right in the window. It needs to be next on the windowsill, basically, next to the glass. Um, yeah, south facing, you might get away with, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's probably too harsh, so bring it into the room if that's where you want to pull it, put it into your room. But it does need a decent amount of light. Okay, so water it needs, what does it need to do? Well, it needs to be watered. No, I'm joking, I'm messing around. Okay, so think of it like a succulent. It's not a true succulent, it's a jungle cacti. It's used to moisture being a little bit higher than maybe you would get on a normal succulent like a snake plant or something like that. They will rot if you give them too much water. This is much more forgiving. It will tolerate water swishing around at the bottom of the pot, which I can hear is happening here. So I've overwatered this plant. Um, yeah, there's water swishing around. So, and it's fine. It's not turning into mush. It's okay. It doesn't mind it. Now, it's not recommended. I don't think that's a good solution you are likely to have problems eventually for too much water so water it well until the water comes out the bottom of the pot or wherever you pull it and then stop so it's saturated it's moist and then don't water it again until it dries out um that's the entire goal as for how long it can be dehydrated for it does have succulent qualities like i said so there's water stored within the uh stems and the leaves in here Oh, it's just stems, they're not leaves, they're stems. So there's water stored in here. So it will cope for a while with no watering. You'll probably get away with even a couple of weeks. So it's quite, it's really resilient, honestly. Um, it can cope with a little bit of overwatering, just be careful. And it can definitely cope with underwatering as well. So it's really, really adaptable house plan. And it's perfect for those who are not spot on with their care technique. And yeah, that's another reason why I love this plant humidity temperature and feeding let's talk about all three things so humidity it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine it will take practically anything 
you don't need to be concerned. In my opinion, um, very, very, very low humidity levels are going to be an issue, but that would be true for any house plant you have in almost all scenarios. If the humidity in your house is ridiculously low, you're going to have to do something about that to be able to grow plants generally. But if you live in a normal home, um, average humidity levels, not a problem. You don't need to worry about it. Temperature. Um, anything above 10 degrees. I do this every time. I am British. We don't do Fahrenheit. So 10 degrees Celsius and above, which Fahrenheit is going to be here. Okay. Um, if you can provide a temp temperature above that, you're going to be fine. It does need warmer temperatures for it to grow though. So if you put it somewhere with that temperature, which for most of us is going to be the winter, it's, you're not going to get any growth at all. It's going to go dormant basically. Um, but if you can provide temperatures above 10 degrees uh, centigrade, um, which is this again, Fahrenheit, then you're going to get some growth. Warmer the better. So if you put it in your living rooms, normal living spaces, temperatures that you're happy in, this plant's going to be happy in too. Um, as for feeding, I don't keep a tally. I don't, I'm not regimented with my feeding with my house plants, and this is no exception. It does need to be fed. You can just see it. It's, it's, it's used to nutrients. In its, in its natural habitat, it would get nutrients sporadically. It's attached to trees. It would get debris from leaves, and just it gets fertilized occasionally, and that's kind of what you need to do in your home as well. Once a month is probably pushing it, to be honest. I, will, I do mine maybe once every three months or something, four times a year, five times a year. Like I said, I don't keep a tally, just, it just needs sporadic feeding. It's not a big deal. Repotting is <laughs> not needed very often. Um, I've had this plant now for a number of years, three, I think, maybe four years. I will put some pictures up of when I first bought it, somewhere along on the screen, and this is it today. It, <sighs> This kind of goes in with speed of growth as well. The plant is steady, it's steady. It's always small anyway, so any growth you see is kind of impressive, but I mean, it's leaning towards one side. I'm rotating it around so you can have a look, but yeah, fine. It's, it's heading towards the window because that's its front, essentially. This is the back. And if you see the picture that I showed you, then you can see it's quite small to start with. And now it's kind of, well, it's massive. It's hanging down, it's trailing, it's great. I love it. Um, but it's still the same container. If you noticed, it's still the same pot. Um, the, the outer pot and the inner pot is exactly the same. So I've not repotted this transplant because it doesn't need it. The root system is quite, it's basic. It, it doesn't fill the pot quickly or easily. As long as it's not a, a tiny, tiny pot, you're going to be fine. Um, as for the potting mix that I came in, because I haven't changed it myself, it's just a very um, normal standard potting mix that you would see in most houseplants. Um, it's not particularly heavy, it's not particularly porous, it doesn't have loads of bark or anything added to it. There's a small amount of perlite in there and I believe it's just some sort of um, coconut core or peat-free mix basically and it hasn't broken down yet. It's been three years in here and it's still doing right. So I might repot it next spring. Like I said, it's Halloween now, it's October, so I'll probably do it next year and I will use a similar potting mix because it is very happy and it's growing fine. So that's what I'd recommend based on my experiences. Okay, let's talk about problems, which I don't really have. This plant is so easy, honestly. In a normal home, it's gonna be fine. Hopefully, hopefully. No pests, nothing I can talk about pests because I haven't had a single one. You do get a bit of corking sometimes on the stems. It's normal, cacti and succulents are known to produce corking on the stems. It's just how it is. Um, you usually get it on plants that get older. It's thought that it's to protect the um, stems a little bit. I mean, potentially you'll get that as well from too much sunlight. So if you're noticing it on your very young plant, a lots of corking, I would maybe move it back from the window or wherever you pull it. It's probably too much light. Um, but yeah, like I said, east facing, west facing. Mine is on a west facing window and I don't have any burns or anything. I've got a tiny bit of corking and that's it. So that's just something you get. And to be honest, that's the only problem I can think of. That's the only one I've had in three years of ownership. I can't talk about anything else because I haven't had any. If you've got a problem with yours, I will try my best to help you. Just tell me about it in the comments or head over to the website. I have a full article on this, which I will link below and just leave it in the comments. Show me some photos or whatever of, of what yours looks like. And I will do my best to advise you. So, that's it. That's it for this plant. Um, if you spot any more plants in my videos that you want me to talk about or you want some tips on or anything like that, just just shout out. Let me know. I want to hear from you. 
Um, and that's it. So I'll see you in the next video. I, I would say happy Halloween, but you could be watching this any time of the year. But uh, yeah, enjoy the October or whenever you are. And I'll catch you in the next video.